Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening, <clears throat> brethren, good evening, saints, good evening, gentlemen, good evening, ladies, good evening, friends. We are again here another day, day 21 of our fasting and prayer. Finally, we are getting closer to the closing stage. As we keep on fasting and praying, may the Lord continue to be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Your prayers will not go in vain. The Lord that you call upon day in, day out will answer you. He will overcome all your challenges for you in the name of Jesus. We are happy to see you again today to fellowship with us and listen to another great man of God. Thank you for tuning in. I want you now to share with your friends. Can you share with your friends? Call them because we have another great man of God that is going to minister the perfect word of God, which is undiluted. And this man preach or preaches with passion. He has the word. When I say he has the word, I know he has the word. Try and share, call somebody, call your friends, call your relation, share with them, tell them to come on. That we have a great man of God coming to minister to us tonight. Without taking your time, I want to have a prayer with you before we go ahead. Heavenly Father, we commit tonight again and all the days we have started prayer till today and the rest of the days that is remaining into your hands. Heavenly Father, all the prayers we are praying, even our innermost prayer that we do, no, none of us do know what we want to pray for, but you sometimes intercede for us Father, let our prayers be answered. Let us get miracles, signs and wonder, testimony to this fasting and prayer in the name of Jesus. Father, is there any prince of Persia that want to steal any of our prayers? Father, send your host of angels to fight our battle for us, to be able to get what we are praying for, and let us give honor and glory back to your name. Because God, to you be the glory, if all our prayers are sung answered, testimony is yours in the name of Jesus. Father, let us overcome all our challenges. Every situation in front of us, let us overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, merciful God, because your grace abound upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We strengthen in the might of God. Tonight, we have a great man of God with us. This is going to mean start to us. Keep sharing, keep sharing as I'm talking. Keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing, keep sharing. Keep sharing. The Lord is with you. His name is Bishop Jonas Katung. Bishop Jonas Katung is the general overseer of Maratha, Maratha Gospel Church International. Maratha Gospel Church International is in Jos Plato. Maratha, Maratha. Is in Jos, the capital of Plato State. Bishop Jonas is widely traveled and minister the undiluted word of God with passion. Bishop Jonas Katung is a man of faith. Jos, in northern part of Nigeria, where he lives, is, is popular, popularly called the J Town. Bishop Jonas Katung is married to Reverend Moma Queen Katung. is married with children and grandchildren. I quote one of uh, Bishop uh, Jonas' uh, word. He said, there is no barrier put in front of a man filled with Holy Spirit that cannot be broken. Fight your business, fight for your marriage, fight for your children, fight the good fight of faith, I unquote. Maratha is an Aramic word. That means the Lord is coming. Or come, O Lord. You can find that in Matthew 10, 34, where Jesus said to the people that, do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth. I have come to bring peace. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. That's where he got the name, Marahata, Marahata Forum. God bless you as we welcome Bishop Jonas Katung, my covenant friend from Joss, God bless you. 
Over to Bishop Jonas now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I am blessed again to be with you this very year. I know we had a, a wonderful time last year, almost the same period. The difference is um, the COVID-19 saga, one of the biggest problems that the world uh, has ever faced together. But whatever the case, we know that we are overcomers. I was asked to share with you the topic overcoming challenges, overcoming challenges. There is no human being born of a woman that will not say the first challenges, the first issues, the first problems, the first hindrances against their lives in the area of health, in the area of business, in the family front, in your job, and in life generally. But I want to take you to the very beginning when God decided that you are going to be born into this world and show you that from the onset, there was a big challenge you have to overcome in order to emerge. The night your dad and your mom met and enjoyed themselves, there were more than 30 billion spams that were released. And they went into a race. They went into a competition. It was a challenge to all the over 30 billion spams to see who is going to overcome? Who is going to enter that egg and the place will close up and the person will get into conception? And at the end of it all, you had run over 30 billion possible human beings. And as soon as you pierce into your mommy's egg, the door closed. Nine months after, you emerge. So from the very beginning, you face the most terrible challenge of your life. And out of over 30 billion spams, you overcame. You became the one that was chosen by God to come into this world. And as God allowed you to come into this world, you started again by having a lot of challenges. One of it is for you to, to grow. They held you on, the, on their hands for a long time. And then they start putting you on the ground to sit down. And then after you start moving from the ground and began to crow. And after that, you overcame the crowing and began to stand holding uh, tools, instruments, tables. After that, you took a step. And before you knew it, you started walking. You were born almost an overcomer. You were born almost an overcomer. There was a seed of overcoming that was deposited on every human being coming into this world. Satan came in, they stopped everything that God has planned through Adam and Eve. But even with that, God set another record by helping us to overcome everything Satan has done by sending his son, Jesus Christ, so that if you can identify with Jesus, then the seed, the overcoming seed, will not enter you forever. And as it comes into you, you begin to have the knowledge of the almighty God. And with the knowledge of the almighty God comes the power to live an overcoming life. Challenges will come every day of every human's life. Some will be small, some will be big, some will be such in a way that you just 
wipe them by the hand, by the wave of your hand, and they disappear. Some will persist. They want to take your life. They want to take your family. They want to take your business. They want to take your job. So that's how the struggle of man continues in life. I lived in the northern part of Nigeria for a very long time. We faced challenges, challenges with our Muslim neighbors, challenges with people who feel that because we are doing evangelism, to come, doing uh, soul winning and doing crusades to win people to Christ, they too decided that they will follow what we are doing and they are going to convert everybody to Islam. And they went to, to beyond the, the major that everybody expects. It's like forcing people, killing pastors and calling and, and burning churches and killing Christians. It became a the huge challenge for us in Joss. Joss was to be like Meduguli. It was the headquarters where they wanted to wipe everybody. And they started. You go to church, you come out of church, you see more than 500 youth with knives, cutting people, nowhere to escape. In this Joss, we cry, cry. Nobody wanted to hear. Then we went into prayer. We started telling God, "We are going to turn these people against themselves. You will turn Egyptian against Egyptian, Philistines against Philistines, and Midians against Midianites. You, they, they will turn, turn around against them." It looks like God was not answering. On the interim, God decided to touch some of these boys that were coming to church and refused to be born again. They decided to take over the fight. They say, we that are born again, we say we can't kill. They say, okay, they never born again. And they will defend the church. And they gave it back to them, fire for fire, sword for sword, gun for gun, blood for blood. It came to the point that some of these boys killed some of these Asa people too from the mosque and cut their body and cook it and we're eating it. So most of them ran away from Joss. The next place to open up was my new to today. And now we hear all the prayers we pray, God, everything that is happening around. They now started facing themselves. They were not now choosing that you, if you are a, they will kill if you are a Christian. They are now stealing one another cows, killing and kidnapping their, their, their children, wives. You hear the story almost every day. Even the president, he was interviewed last week and he said he can't understand. People of the same faith, people of the same tradition will turn around and be doing this to one another. They don't know that we prayed for God, the overcoming God who has brought us to fight for us and turn these people against themselves. I want to tell you with all confidence, there is no prayer you've been praying concerning any challenge in your life, in your family, concerning your health that God has not had. A time will come, just as we were praying back to back, the answers will be happening, and um, uh, will be answered and taking place back to back. God has taught us a lot of lessons in Nigeria in the things that are happening. I cannot talk about everything here, but I want you to know, we have come to know this God that is not man, he cares. And he answers the prayers of his own people. I want to encourage you. The few things I'm going to share with you, some of them are very practical. And if you adopt it and make your life to go under the pattern of going after God, you are not going to miss anything. Let us start with the story of Father Abraham. Genesis chapter 14, I mean chapter 18, verse 14. And the Bible says, is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything in this world, is anything in this life, is anything that surrounds you, that troubles you, that gives you sleepless nights, too hard for the Lord, the God that created the heaven and the earth. Do you know him? Do you know his capabilities? Do you know his power? Do you know what he can do if you believe? and trust in him. Abraham and Sarah, they were looking for a child for 25 years. 25 years. And God came 
when Abraham was 70 years old, 75 years old, and told him, walk before me and be holy. And then he told him he's going to give him a child. One year passed, two years, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. Flesh came in. Sarah thought maybe what God meant. Why not use my house girl, Egyptian, and let it happen? He went into it, something happened. But after all that, God still came and said, That was not what I promised you. 25 years after. 25 years after, all of a sudden, God appeared during summer like this. And Abraham was at the tent of his house. I mean, I was at the door of his tent. And he saw three men come passing by. He perceived in his spirit that these are no ordinary men. The partridge, Abraham, ran and bowed down before them, which at that time, He's too old to bow down for anybody. He was about 100 years old, 99 years old. But he bowed down for those three people he saw. Somehow in the spirit, the Bible say, deep call it for deep. When you have been walking tirelessly in the spirit realm, when your time of visitation comes, you always know it. You will be able to sense it. You will know, no, this is the time. Abraham moving. I went to those men and bowed down and, and, and welcomed them. And he said to them, come aside. I'm going to bring some water so that you can wash. I can wash your feet. And you come to the tent, take some water. And then my wife is a good cook. It's going to make some good food for you to eat because the sun is too much. And I guess this journey you, are, you have embarked on is a very serious one. And the, the, he didn't know it was God and two angels who disguised himself. My friend, how many times maybe God has come passing by and you know he's the one. But when God wanted to end the prayer and fasting of Abraham and Sarah, which has lasted for 25 years, he came by himself. God left heaven and came by himself because of a man. There's nothing God cannot do for his own children. Don't forget he sent Jesus to come physically as a man in order to meet with us, to identify with us, and to go all through the pains of overcoming on our behalf so that we can have a meaningful life and forever, not just for some times. Ladies and gentlemen, to cut the long story short, after God has eaten that food that Sarah prepared, he called Abraham and said, by this time next year, according to the time of life, I will return and Sarah shall have a child, shall have a son. And Abraham just noted, all the promises that I will now became a specific time of accomplishment. God said time was now announced by this time next year. And I prophesy to you that is listening to me by this time next year during this program, when it will repeat itself, the greatest and hardest thing that I've given you very tough time. You have been praying, you have been fasting, you have been believing God month after month. It seems it doesn't want to come. It must come to pass by this time next year. Whether it's a child, whether it's a business, whether you want to break through to become a millionaire in pounds, not in naira, God is going to do it. The God we serve will do it. This message is not coming to you by accident. It happened before. It can happen again because God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He said, I'm the Lord, I change not. What he did before, he can do again. The Bible says, just as in the day of Sodom, so shall the coming of the Lord be. Just as the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Lord be. Just as the day of Abraham, I add that one, so shall the coming of the Lord do. What happened during that time? God appeared. God came down and in the madness of men, 
and gave some people a new face of life, brought some people out of destruction, changed some people's lives forever, made Noah to build the ark that contained every living thing that we can see today and save his whole family. Salvation is coming. Deliverance is coming. Healing is coming. Prosperity is coming. Just as it were, so shall it be, because God does not change. And God say, by this time next year, I will return. God will return to you. God will return to grace, the, 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 the grace to grace uh, a program we do every year. And everybody that hears the sound of my voice, you are going to have expect spectacular testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Sarah laughed. The Bible says in verse 12, therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I'm waxing old, 90 years old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a shorty bear a child? which I am old, Where, why did Sarah laugh? Why do you doubt what you are hearing? Why do you doubt because of long time of praying about a particular issue and it has refused to surface? Why do you laugh? That God is telling you that it has come to the point now that an appointed time is set for you. God has sent me to set an appointed time to this prayer that you've been praying for all this time. It will end by this time next year in the name of the Lord God Almighty. And God said to Abraham, the biggest question that every Christian must answer if you want to go forward. Verse 14 is anything, anything includes everything. Is anything getting married, the correct husband, the correct wife, it doesn't matter how old you are, is anything having children, be married for some time, and yet you have not been pregnant, who cares? If it can come for Sarah at 90, it can come to you at 30, at 35, at 40, at 50 safe. I know a certain Air Force officer. I preached to them when they were just ordinary ranks in the Air Force. He got married 21 years. One day the wife just got pregnant after 21 years and get back. Air Vice Marshal Como. After many years, we got to connect. I had to call him to come to Jaws and preach and give the testimony. Because I was preaching to him when I was just young before I even got married. And each time we would pray about miracles, these things happen to this military men. Yet his wife did not conceive. 21 years after, he, he made sure he came with the wife and the child. Oh, I remember one Mrs. Semeka were doing prayer meeting in their house in Kaduna. And God was performing great miracles every Friday. People will come with all kinds of issues. we we'll put them in the middle and pray in tongues. And then run it up and miracles happen. And she was the host. The husband will sneak and go away, he was a lecturer in Kaduna Protegi, and left the wife to host us. When she saw power, intensity of prayer, and God moved, one day she collapsed and came into the middle and said, brethren, these blessings cannot pass me. And I said, What's your, what is your problem? What do you want from God? She said, she has been married 11 years now. She has not been able to conceive. We didn't ask any question. What happened? They, 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 what did you do? Well, kneel down. We tell her to kneel down. She kneel down. And we started praying in tongues, prayed in tongues, prayed in tongues. And then we lay hands on her and we call for the spirit of life. Command that she will conceive. We never knew this woman had no womb. She didn't tell anybody. It was later the story came that when she was a young girl, something happened to her. She went to do abortion and it got complicated and they removed her womb completely. She didn't even tell the husband before marrying him. She didn't tell Mr. Omega. 
Then she just came in. If she had told us this, maybe with all the faith I'm talking, I wouldn't have had the gods to pray. I would just pray religious prayer and tell her to go. But well, because she didn't tell anybody, we we'll just say, like, what? God is doing great things. I can't tell you all one by one the miracles that happen that move her to come in, inside and believe that God can give her a child. Only she knew she had no womb. But because God is not a respecter of persons, and where people show faith in God, God comes in for them, comes out for them, comes through for them. This is the maker got uh, pregnant. When she went to 44 hospital in Kaduna, it's a military hospital. The doctors took her to examine her and discovered that she was six months pregnant because she hit everything. She was six months pregnant. And when the doctor checked, he discovered that this pregnancy, he can see a child, but not inside a womb. He told her, you don't have womb. She said, yes, she doesn't have. But there's a child there on the bare stomach. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? I almost fainted when she came to give us a testimony. So the doctor said, this is one in one million. Let's follow it up and see what will happen. Do you know at nine months, we were preparing to do her uh, surgery. This woman pushed and gave birth through the normal way. Direct. Direct. That is the goal you serve. If you could do it for him, Mr. Mecca, he would do it for you. She gave back to a bouncing baby boy. Was preaching somewhere. I just saw one woman and the Holy Spirit, he, he, he told me, said, she has problem with spirit husband. Spirit husband have been making her to have abortion all the time. Miscarriages. And I called her, I said, come out here right now, in the church. And I just said, you spirit husband, come out of her in the name of Jesus. I destroy your marriage and relationship with her. And I command you, if your next pregnancy will stand, and she'll give birth to a baby boy. She gave birth to the baby boy and called him after my name, Jonas. Now, all this testimony I'm giving, the people are there, they are still there. Some of these children are grown up now, very, very, very grown up now. Some of them are 25, 30, you know, so I know there is nothing in this life that can distress you to the point that you feel like giving up. Except you don't know the goal we are talking about. But I know you do. Being in the ministry of my brother and my sister, they have taught you the truth because they go for the word of God. They are Bible inclined church and you have heard the truth over and over again. I come to just add to what you have been hearing. To tell you, don't agree. Don't let it bog you down or discourage you. God is still God. He's alive today. He'll be alive forevermore. And God asks Abraham, your wife is laughing. Because I said, by this time, I'll come back. And she will give back to a child. So what if she's 1,000 years old? It's me, it's God talking. This Bible was written for you that have no faith to hear the stories of the true happening that happened those, those days to develop faith in God. The Bible said, this is a victory that overcome the world, even our faith in God's word. Even our faith in following God through Jesus Christ. We are made overcomers. Jesus said, I've overcome the world. And you too have overcome. So already before any challenge comes, you are ready and overcomer. Some of them want to prove difficult. Some of them want to discourage you as if God does not care. Don't believe them. Turn away your, your, your focus on the issues of life and face God. Nobody look at the water, look at the sea, look at the sea of God as troubling and walk and see walk on the water. It is on the word of Jesus, on the invitation of Jesus, Peter walk on the water. He said, if thou be the one, let me come. And Jesus said, come. 
He walked on that word come, C-O-M-E, C-O-M-E. Once he removed the focus from Jesus, he started thinking. Then he screamed, Lord, save me, and he saved him. Every detail of thing you read and hear God did to the disciples, to the people of his days when he was alive and did ministry for three and a half years can be reproduced today. For Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he's proving himself to be God over Nigeria. Some people came out with one kind of a prophecy that there shall be war in Nigeria 2021. And my friends posted in our group and I told them there will be no war. This Nigeria we are living. Because many years back, in the early late 70s into early 80s, all almost all over the country, there were groups, Pentecostal group were for just forming, and all the thing they do is pray, prophesy have a notebook for the prophecy. And all the prophecies are agreed from just to Zaria, to, to Kaduna, to Ibadan, to Ilorin, and all the brethren. You know, brethren were called by Ibadan brethren, uh, Ilorin brethren, Zaria brethren. And we all connect. What was God saying? Nigeria is going to be used as the, the, the major spiritual power block that will bless the whole world. Is that not what has been happening? Why would, at this time, God allow the devil to come and cause war in Nigeria and destroy the nation that has the largest church in the world, that have more believers praying at any given hour, more than anywhere else in the world? I told them they should tell that woman to go and look for another prophecy. But, and since she was saying that no, nobody can do anything about it, who says so? Who says so? Any revelation that God gives, he gives it because he wants us to do something about it. And there's something we can do about it. That which nothing can be done about, he doesn't even tell anybody. It just happened. So when God asked Abraham, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied saying, I love not for she was afraid and he said, nay, but you laugh. You did laugh. I saw you laugh. Even though you didn't laugh in my presence, but you did. Hallelujah. Yet, she told lies before God. God did not cancel the miracle. God did not change his mind about what he said was going to happen to her. God still allowed it to take place. That is to say, when you have come under the grace of God, when God has pronounced a miracle for you, your unbelief cannot do anything against it. Your doubt fail to abort what God has already said. What is said has gone forth. What you are doing is just an afterthought. It can't cancel the miracle of God. In chapter 21 of the book of Genesis, the Bible said, and the Lord remembered Sarah and did unto her as he has spoken. God will remember you. God will do unto you as he has spoken to the servants of God that have been speaking to you on this program. There is no how. Your tears will not be wiped by the almighty God by giving you what you have been asking him for. God is going to do it. Let me share with you another scripture. Psalm 55. Psalms 55. Hallelujah. In Psalms 55, verse 18, you see David, that warrior, that man of God, that man after God's hand, facing life challenges everywhere and he took hold of God and in verse 17 he says okay verse 16 he says as for me I will call upon God and the Lord shall save me the Lord shall make me to overcome every challenge the Lord will defeat all my enemies the Lord will provide 
open doors for me. I will call upon the Lord God. And he didn't say maybe. He said, and the Lord shall, shall. He, he, he so much had good faith in God that he refused to doubt God. No wonder he killed Goliath. No wonder he killed the lion. No wonder he killed the bear. No wonder the whole nation went after him looking for him to destroy. And they never did. This was his, his secret. In verse 17, he said, evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud. And he, God, shall hear my voice. What a covenant he went into. What a covenant he went into. Three times a day, just like, eh, have you eaten your breakfast? Mm. Hey, sister, have you eaten your lunch? Have you eaten your dinner? You are doing that. You are asking people that are your friends because you care. Now, can you be adding, have you done your morning prayer? Have you visited God in the afternoon? Have you prayed this afternoon? Have you prayed this evening? Three times he said, it was like a daily food, daily meal. He said, God, you will hear my voice. I will register it. Wherever, no matter how busy, you will hear my voice in the morning, in the evening, and in the afternoon. That's a man who does not want disappointment. Persistent. Releasing all his heart cry to the almighty God so that his enemy will not have chance. No chance. Once you have reported them to God, to whom shall they go? For me, I shall call upon God. And he, the Lord, shall save me. In verse 18, he said, He, God, had delivered my soul in peace from the battle that was against me. For there were many with me. Or, the King James, you may not understand that last sentence means, for there were many against me. Many that came to fight me. Many that came to fight me. But I battled them against them. And God, Delivered me from them. I prophesy everywhere. People hate to hear your name. Anything that has to do with it, you want to terminate it by the power of the Holy Ghost and the anointing of God in the life of your pastors and everybody has spoken in this program. I command defeat over all those your enemies in the name of Jesus Christ. Though they come against you seven different ways. I mean, one way, they shall flee in seven different ways. A thousand will fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right. None of these things shall come near you. Because the Lord is fighting for you. That devil is a liar. The angel was sent to Mary. To go and tell her that she shall give birth to a child as a virgin. And she said, how can this thing be? I'm a virgin. I've not known a man. The angel Ask one question, Luke 1 37. For with, he, he told her, he made a statement, he told her, he said, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Brother and sister, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. The God that created the universe, that had never allowed any planet to have an accident, the one that keeps us by day, by night, by winter, by summer, no matter how high the temperatures are, no matter how low they become, man is just panicking for nothing. God did not create this world to interrupt it halfway. He would take it to the end of harvest. When you come down with his angels to, to do the things he has spoken, he will do in the book of Daniel and Revelation. Don't let anybody tell you that this world will end in a, in a different way than what you see in the Bible. Is it the man that owns the world? Is it man that created it? Is God. So he said to her, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And I said the same thing to you, dear brother, dear sister, for with God, nothing you are believing God for shall be impossible. It shall come to you at the time that you are not even expecting, but it shall come. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, let's, let's round up there. First John chapter five. First John chapter five. Praise the Lord. I hope somebody is being blessed. First John chapter five. I read verse four and verse five. 
He said, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome the wall, overcome the wall, overcome every challenge, defeat every confrontation. Whosoever, whatsoever is born of God has victory already. Overcome the wall, overcoming every difficulty and problems that the world shoot at you. Why? Because you are born of God. Because you are born of God. You say, and this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Even our faith, faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of God, faith coming by faith, faith coming by hearing and understanding the word of God. As the more of the word of God you, you, you absorb into you, the more faith you build in the time of needs. Nobody who reads this Bible and does not develop faith. You know, you are a product of what you see, what you read, and what you hear. If we allow people to bombard you on social media with rubbish stories here and there, and at the end, you don't have time to read your Bible, you'll be full of social media. And there's a lot of disappointment in that place. A lot. In fact, some people, by the time they finish with you, you your, their life will almost be sucked out of you. You'll be so discouraged. You know, some people don't know how to encourage. All they come is to brag, to make you feel that nothing is happening to you only day. And it's all lies. So you better turn to YouTube, check all the preaching, preaching of preachers that have preached before and now, and, and you are going to see what is going to happen to you. You will think about God. You will think God. You will act God. You will talk God. And you will see God in action. I got so angry. Eh? One day, I just came out from uh, uh, all those social media. They say, hey, use it to preach. I won't preach again there. I not do. Because too many things. I just go to my YouTube, check what I want to hear, and hear it. If a church has a program and give me a connection, I connect. So long as it's the word of God, I, I get blessed. But I will never sit down, just waste my time for nothing. When God is waiting to hear from me when some things need to be overcome. This is a victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Brother, build faith in God. Build faith in the word of God. Build it, you need it now. These are dangerous and evil days. I don't want to go into that. Verse five says, who is he? Who is she that overcome the world? But he, she that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God, whoso ever believes that Jesus is the Son of God, is the one that overcome the world. Why? Because as soon as you believe that, God imparts into you the overcoming spirit, the seed of the overcomer, just by believing. Jesus is the son of God. Your sins are forgiven. Every limitation is brought down. Every difficulty is, you are given the power to face it and overcome it on daily basis. Because these challenges keep coming. They will never stop coming until we go to heaven. So if you think that they, they, you need a break, a problem, stop, just give me a break. You are wasting your time. In fact, by saying so, you just make Satan angry. You now multiply. You will seize your neighbor's own and add to you first of all. So you wake up every day and say, where is the challenge? In the name of Jesus, I am more than an overcomer. And I overcome you whatever direction you come from. Ever before you surface, I attack you so that you're not even so sure of. And the ones that have been there trying to embarrass me. I send embarrassment to you. I send embarrassment to your agents. I send embarrassment to wherever the source is coming from. Back to sender. And you are going to see how your life will be so rich. How your life will be so blessed. How your life will be so empowered and envy. That's where God wants to, go want to take you to. It is an error on daily basis to wake up and life is the same. 
happenings are the same. Nothing is changing. Some of us will tell you the battles we are fighting, not on our behalf, on behalf of the nation, on behalf of the church, on behalf of families. You say, is this what life is all about? Of course, on daily basis, Jesus was facing challenges, solving problems. Anywhere he entered, once people knew they brought their challenges, he had to overcome it for them. One place to another. That's the life of a Christian. That's the life that he has given us to live, to be solution givers, providers, anywhere we go. Well, I want to be in a place where people turn around and they say, who pray for us? And they say, ah, Katung is there, Katung pray for us. I love it. I love it. I asked God for prayer when I was asked to go and pray somewhere in a certain wedding. I started praying for the prayer. You know, when they say you preach, you start praying for what you are going to preach. I don't, when you say pray, save, I'll start praying for the prayer. Go take over. Holy Ghost, pray to me. They took me to one professor who, 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 who did not believe in God. The whole family was seated. And somebody took me all the way from just to Onicha. And this man, he, 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 he is a doctor of, uh, uh, it, uh, you know, these people that uh, do, when somebody dies, they'll cut the body and do post-mortem and all those things. He has even a, he has a mortuary attached to his house. Then he was telling me that, young man, what are you talking about? I want to show you a miracle. Come and see, the pottery is growing on top of my roof and there is no soil there. That's a miracle. Can you tell me where he's getting his nourishment? I said, I cannot tell you, but can we pray? Can we pray? All this argument, I know this, sir. You are a professor. This is professor. You go around Europe and the rest of the... I said, can we just pray? He said, hey, go ahead and pray now. I said, very good. So the preaching I was to preach, I took it into the prayer. From, I started from Genesis. When God created man, his image. How man rebelled. How Satan came in and messed up everything, but how God overtook Satan, the things that God has done. And I said, You have been good to this man. You've given me a blessed family. He may not have known you, he may not have made contact with you, but God Almighty, I ask today, as I spread in his house, let the power of God touch him. I was praying in English, but I knew the words that were coming through my mouth. I was not thinking about them. They were being released by the Holy Spirit. By the time I reached in the middle, even with myself, I lost control. To pray on top of my spirit. He knew that this was not religion. He knew that I was passionate about what I was praying about. And I cared for him. He could hear it from the voice. By the time I ended, nobody could say one word. By the time everybody lifted up their eyes, everybody was in tears, including prof. When he opened his mouth, he said, Young man, this was inspirational. I didn't say a word. God gave us so much power that we don't use. But just look for something that will provoke you over the issues of people's problems and over the problems that try to embarrass your family. Let, let, let God put so much anger in you then go into prayer in that anger. Oh, bakatayalaba. Oh, masuku paria na makaya. You that anger, that provocation in the spirit triggers something. Trigger something. Even praying just prayer, religious prayer, normal prayer, and things that are happening are just normal. Nothing outstanding, nothing miraculous, nothing to give testimony about. Get angry in the spirit. You know, at the tomb of La I, 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 at the tomb of Lazarus. When Jesus Christ came to the tomb and really saw Lazarus had been buried four days, the Bible says he groaned in his spirit. You know what that means? He groaned in his spirit. And then he said to them, Roll the stone away. And then he said, Lazarus, come forth. Spiritual anger. He, he triggers. A supernatural anointing that is unstoppable. If you see somebody, two people fighting, and one again, one of them get angry in the fight and started doing fight on top of fight, he must win that fight. 
Do you see the exploits Nigerians are doing in wrestling, in kickboxing, in a world boxing federation? Packing all the barrels. It's like when they look at what is happening at home and the way this government is dealing with people, the anger that they are supposed to, if they have the opportunity to kick the leaders, they just put it and kick their enemies and they win the belt. Why can't you do that spiritually? Convert that spiritually and see all the testimony that will begin to come in. Brother, if that thing is a problem to you, eh, take it really as a problem. Get angry in the spirit. Pray a prayer you have never prayed before. Do it. It's given the power, the release is in your spirit. Oh, that God will open your eyes to see what I am seeing in the spirit concerning what God wants to do for you, for you before this time next year. Oh, that you will, you will connect to what I am saying and let that spiritual anger comes into you so that you repeat the kind of exploit that the early disciples repeat did. All prophets did during the time of David, during the time of Isaiah, during the time of Jeremiah, those people that didn't care. But only those says the Lord. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. If God is no greater in us now than their time, then we are not doing the right thing that we are supposed to do. You know why? Because they didn't have written Bibles. They didn't have recorded testimonies that we have that we are reading. All the things that we are written for our knowledge, for our growth, for our challenge, we are meant to make us better people, better believers. All that you understand the kind of oil God wants to see flow in this end time. All that you tap into this firebrand spirit of God and begin to pray like crazy, spiritually crazy, and crush everything that has been embarrassing your life, or that you will get to know that there is a miracle that has been prepared that will come into your life and change you forever and the way you perceive God. Father, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this privilege to share with your people. And I ask in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that whosoever have connected to these brokers, to the internet, through whatever link, I pray that the spirit of the almighty God will catch fire in their spirit and will cause them to be restless until they have brought themselves to that level you want them to be and begin to manifest the spiritual anointing for this time, for this hour. We can't be living in the period of high demand of God's intervention as it were yesterday, as if it is yesterday. Let him understand that to every challenge, there is a solution God has prepared in the hearts of his own people, only for them to reach out. Help them to reach out. Help them to tap into the spiritual fire of Almighty God. Answer their prayers. Let their challenges, their problems, their difficulties be brought down to defeat. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I guess I finished before the time. Yes, sir. So we could spend the remaining time to pray. Yeah, pray. Keep on praying, sir. Bishop. All right. I would like everyone to join me in prayer. And the prayer I'm going to pray, I hope you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because it's more effective when you pray in tongues. The Bible says we we'll don't know what to pray as we ought to, as God expects us to. But the spirit make it intercession with, for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knows the mind of the spirit, that the spirit make it intercession for the saints all over the world, according to the will of God. And when we pray according to the will of God, we know that God 
answers or God answer immediately. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I'd like us to pray in the spirit right now. Rebo kuma rahen kataba numo sunda akapuri akalala mama muso kopa ni makunka itali ala la kubari na mauro boko soko poro bokunda inda mude yeke poro bokumba ni ya anka sinda kani mamoje jeboro boko pori maka into kula lika muro bosoko pori ma inka budi ala base soko poro mani ya inta kali arabaku. Tika liba bosu ka ina mo meke morobo kopari ana ma konde ne boroma insanta kapuri ana ma hold down the structures of unrighteousness and every arrow that be shot against anybody here I send it back to the sender in the name of Jesus Christ I command the work of darkness to come crashing down never to rise again against God's people e boroma mo kopuri ana kara e kapani ana raba konso kopuri ana lo robo koboro nati. In Cateria Labacundia, Mando Roba Cosso Pocuriana, the Camel Robo de Empacuni Alaboso, Sicalima Maruca Inda, Macuni Mia Laba Soteke, Loco Boria Labado, Emosunta, 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 Moro Coparia, Macunia Lanaba Conda, Acalima Marima Mosuntaba. God move all over the world, move wherever your children are in America in London, in Europe, in Nigeria, in Africa, all over, and people are connected. Let the power of God go round and rise, rise up an altar on their behalf against every form of evil, every form of wickedness, every form of demonic uh, 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 possession or obsession in the name of Jesus, every form of demonic oppression, I bind you by the power of the Holy Ghost. And I command you, lose your griefs over God's people. Lose your griefs over God's people. Lose your grief over their businesses. Lose your griefs over their families. Lose your griefs, every form of confusion. Destroy you by the cross of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood of Jesus over the sea. And I command healing from the tallest here of their head to the sole of their feet. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Lord is in infinite mercy. We graciously reward you. The anointing that you drop from heaven will continue to fill you up every day. May God continue to be with you guide you, protect you, and shield you everywhere you go. May the crown of glory continue to be with you and your family always in the name of Jesus. From the oil, from the well that you have brought out all the words and prayer for us, may it manifest in us that testimonies will come out of this ministration today in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you on behalf of my wife, Pastor Atimika Adesanya, the members of GGIC, we say thank you for your word, for the gracious word, undiluted word of God with testimony coming out from the world. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, Bishop. The Lord bless and be with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Our greetings to Reverend, Reverend, to your, to, to your darling wife, Reverend, Reverend Mama, Reverend Mama Queen Katung, and the children. God bless you. Once again, brethren, saints, you have heard the man of God. He has given us the diluted word, how to overcome challenges, how we were, we fought from our, our mother's womb with 30 billion of span. We came out, how we started working, how we started doing everything, overcoming challenges from our youth. Yes, we are still alive. And we continue to overcome all those challenges in the name of Jesus. Yes, trouble will come, but then God will not take you more than the trouble that you cannot afford. We will overcome every challenge in the name of Jesus. Without taking your time, it's now to give your offering, to sow a seed, to sow a seed offering to, the, to, to, to this ministration. Please, so you see, all the seed people have asked, our, 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 our details are on, on the screen. Try and transfer your balance, to your money to, to, to the account. And as you do, your seed, your offering will speak for you. Your offering will speak for you. Your seed will speak for you. Your seed will continue to speak for you and open doors of opportunities for you. I remember when Pastor Atimike was preaching one time, there was a time somebody was sick and he was in the hospital because he obeyed God, he obeyed God, he obeyed God. 
and God and Pastor Tinegar went to God and said, look, this and this and this and this and this are what this gentleman did. This man cannot die. And truly the man came out alive. The hospital, the doctors were saying, no, he's going to, when he comes out, he's going to turn to a vegetative manner. But alas, he came out, lo and behold, he became whole. He came to church and give testimony. On December 26, he came, thinking that he was going to die that December. But December 26, he came and give Thanksgiving. And he will spend the night, 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 the uh, 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 crossover together to 34th. We spend it together with him because this can do something for you. Sow your seed, sow your seed. Pay your money, you understand? Let it speak for you. Let it speak for your children in the name of Jesus. Thank you as you are giving. God will give back to you and answer your prayers more in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you for tonight. God bless you for, yeah, since all the time we have started. God bless you for your giving. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. As we are going tonight, may the word that we have had tonight, may it work for you. May it open doors for you. May it open opportunities for you. May it open businesses for you. May you overcome all those challenges. That man that you want to open up your business, that you have been having challenges, time is now. Like the man that passed, the, uh, the three men that passed in front of Abraham, Abraham went and uh, bowed down before them. Your time is now. Your time is now. Your time is now. Do not doubt. Do not doubt. Those who have been telling you it cannot be possible, it is possible. Go for it, and God will do it for you in the name of Jesus. God bless you all. As you are going tonight, may the Lord be with you. May the Lord hear your prayers. May the Lord comfort you and be with you. As we are going to sleep tonight, will you sleep well? All those negative dreams, you will not dream them anymore in the name of Jesus. Go in the might of God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the Spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore in Jesus' mighty name. Go. God bless you all. God bless you all. God bless you all. We love you. Don't forget tomorrow morning in their presence is coming. And tomorrow evening, call everybody around. We are having Bishop Jonas Katung again. He's coming back again to give you the dilute, undiluted word of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Till we see tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock in their presence, and in the church, God of Breakthrough, at 10, at, 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 at 10 o'clock, please be there, and God will be with you. God bless you all. We love you. GGSC love you. God bless you. Have a very good evening. Bye.